This video is best viewed at full screen size. This schematic shows the stages through which grain passes as it is milled into flour or animal feed. Only relevant parts of the mill have been shown, with many faces made transparent to allow the action to be seen. During the animation some items are temporarily hidden if they obscure a particular view. The equipment is spread out over five floors, with the machinery concentrated on the meal and stone floors. The mill is capable of grinding many cereal types or other seed crops, but corn is the principal grain to be processed. On entering the mill, grain is taken up to the bin floor by means of a sack hoist, where it is emptied into a bin that feeds the wire machine. The wire machine cleans the grain in preparation for grinding. It consists of a wire mesh drum, inside which are rotating brushes and beta bars that churn the grain to remove debris and any remaining chaff or husk. Debris and small fragments of husk pass through the wire mesh, then fall down a spout to a waiting sack. This leaves the clean grain to drop out of the lower end of the wire drum and down a separate spout to a screw conveyor which delivers it to a bagging point. Chaff and light particles of husk become airborne in the drum, so are removed by an air blower. The blower is only temporarily shown in this schematic. Sacks of clean grain are hoisted up to the dust floor and emptied into a large bin ready for grinding into flour. The mill has four pairs of stones, of which stones one and four are made from French burr, which is preferred for producing flour. The spout from the grain bin can be swung to the hoppers of either of these two pairs of stones. Grain in the hopper drops onto a shoe that feeds it to the eye of the stone. When ground, the resulting meal emerges from between the stones and collects in the tun, the octagonal enclosure, where it is swirled around by the spinning action of the runner stone until it drops down a spout to the meal floor and onto a conveyor belt. The conveyor transports the meal to an elevator that lifts it up to the top of the bolter machine. The bolter has a rotating cloth covered drum that sieves the meal, separating the flour from the bran. Fine flour falls through onto a screw conveyor that takes it to a spout for sack filling, the sacks then being weighed as the finished product. Bran and unground particles of grain and any remaining flour tumble out of the end of the bolter drum and onto a jog scray, a rocking sieve in the form of an inclined tray. The products are shaken down the sloping tray, causing the leftover flour to pass through the sieve and onto a short elevator that adds it to the main body of flour for bagging. The short elevator is not shown in this animation, only arrows indicating the direction. Bran and particles of grain leaving the end of the jog scray are transported by a long elevator back to the stone floor where they are directed to stone 2 for regrinding. From stones 2, reground meal passes down a spout to a vibrating sieve mounted above the conveyor belt that was seen previously. This sieve separates any new flour, allowing it to fall onto the conveyor to be sent back to the bolter, whilst the bran travels to the end of the sieve where a side chute directs it into a holding bin for disposal. The steam mill that ran in tandem with the windmill did not have its own sieving machines, so a separate bin allowed meal from the steam mill to be fed directly into the bolter system. For grinding animal feed, stones three are used. These have their own supply bin and their output is sieved by a jog scray to remove grit, poppy seed and any other debris. If needs be, stones two can also be used for this purpose. Returning to a general view and switching on all flow arrows, we can now see the entire complexity of the milling process. As we swing around the mill, you may like to use your pause control so you can study the detail.